So next, now we will talk about the heat capacity. So what is heat capacity? It is just amount of heat absorbed or released by a substance per degree rise or fall in temperature. So of course, if uh, it absorbs some heat, then its temperature will rise. And if heat is released, its temperature will fall. Okay. So amount of heat absorbed or released by a substance per degree rise or fall in temperature, it is called as the heat capacity. Right. Now, there are different heat capacities. This is just heat capacity. Then there would be uh, the specific heat capacity. And after that, there is the molar heat capacity, right? So, we need to understand them. So, what is heat capacity? We will denote it by capital S. S is equal to what? Delta Q by delta T, right? Amount of heat absorbed per degree rise in temperature, okay? Per degree Celsius, you can say rise in temperature or per Kelvin rise in temperature. So, its unit can be written as what? Joules per degree Celsius or Joules per Kelvin, right? This thing is clear? Just a definition. Okay. Next, specific heat capacity the amount of heat absorbed or released by a substance per unit mass. So, there is this extra piece now per unit mass and per degree rise or fall in temperature. Okay. So, you just divide this heat capacity by mass of substance and you get the specific heat capacity. Right. So, okay. Now, how do we find this heat capacity? So, to find heat capacity, uh, we put the substance whose heat capacity is to be measured in a device known as calorimeter. Okay, so what is the calorimeter? So, it is a container generally made up of uh, an insulating material, not generally, every time. It would be made up of an insulating material like wood. Okay, so suppose this is wooden vessel and there is wooden lead also. So that no heat will escape. Okay. And then there is another container inside this wooden container. So generally there would be vacuum over here. And uh, so vacuum is difficult. So there might be air over there. And there would be a steel container, a steel flask. Okay. Steel vessel, let's say. So that steel vessel will contain some water. Okay, and suppose I want to measure the specific heat capacity of this thing. Okay, this device. Right. So, in this example, this device is a resistor or it is some wire and it is heated. It is heated using uh, this current, uh, current source. Right. So now it might be current source or what you can do is suppose uh, you take some boiling water somewhere else. Okay. And suppose you take a steel ball, you, okay, or copper ball, etc. Right. Copper ball, copper cube. You keep it in the boiling water so that its temperature goes to what? 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. Then you take it and dip it inside this calorimeter water. Okay. So now this part is not that important, meaning how do you heat it is not that important. What is important is you know its temperature initially. Okay, you know its initial temperature, right? And then there is this thermometer. Okay, then there is this thermometer. What we do is we measure the change in the temperature of this water. So after some time, what will happen? This water as well as this body, they will come at same temperature. So, initial temperature of water is known, right? And then the temperature of this object is known, initial temperature, and the object will be at higher temperature compared to that of water, right? You can do the other way around also. That means you can put the cold object also. In that case, it will absorb heat, okay? If you put hot object, it will release heat to the water in the calorimeter okay right so we measure 
we measure how much amount of heat is given away okay and in what time and what is the change in temperature right and so if we know this information we can find out the heat capacity or specific heat capacity is this thing clear everyone yes no okay so this is the calorimeter right so now what is heat capacity so heat capacity s is the amount of heat absorbed or given away by a substance per degree change in temperature okay so delta q is the heat delta t is the change in temperature right and its unit would be joules per kelvin then specific heat capacity is the amount of heat absorbed or released by a substance per unit mass of the substance per degree change in change in temperature okay and then what would be its unit so you have this mass in the denominator so earlier uh, unit of this thing were joules per kelvin divided by mass that means a unit of mass so it would be joules per kg kelvin right so heat absorbed or heat given away can be written as what delta q is equal to so specific heat capacity will denote by letter s right so move this mass times delta t on other side so delta q is equal to s times m delta t okay and what's the relation between heat capacity and the specific heat capacity so the relation is very simple small s is just equal to capital s divided by m or capital s is just equal to small s multiplied by m right very very simple okay right good now after that next is the molar heat capacity okay so we know what is one mole right so the amount of heat absorbed or released by substance per mole per degree rise or fall in temperature is known as the molar heat capacity so now suppose you take some quantity of substance it will be n moles right so then molar heat capacity is denoted by letter c so what is c c is delta q divided by n times delta t okay delta q divided by number of moles and also divided by delta t that means change in temperature okay so c is equal to delta q divided by n delta t okay so this thing is clear okay so then for gases we define two different molar heat capacities for solids and liquids uh, there is only one molar heat capacity for gases there are two different molar heat capacities one is at constant pressure another one is at constant volume okay and the reason behind this is the behavior of gases is completely different the amount of heat absorbed by gases is completely different in the two cases okay so we'll talk about that um, later in the kinetic theory of gases so just remember that there are two heat capacities for gases because behavior of gases is completely different at constant pressure and constant volume so there would be cp which is molar heat capacity at constant pressure and cv is the molar heat capacity at constant volume okay and also specific heat capacity also there would be sp and sv because right if one heat capacity is different means every heat capacity is different okay so heat capacities at constant pressure heat capacities at constant volume okay so after that uh, if we just connect this equation with this equation okay if we just divide them then what do we get see so we have c is equal to what delta q divided by n delta t okay and uh, from this equation we can write delta q is equal to what c times n delta t and we had that equation one the delta q in terms of specific heat capacity is s times m delta t and this is c times n delta t right from this equation we have c times n delta t okay 
So then if you equate them, if you equate this and this equation because in both cases, see uh, you are measuring the heat capacity, the specific heat capacity or suppose the molar heat capacity, but you are suppose if change in heat or amount of heat given out is equal for equal change in temperature, right? Amount of heat given away by a substance or absorbed by a substance would be equal for the equal change in temperature and therefore what you can do is you can equate this with this, okay? The first equation with second equation. If you do that, then delta T, delta T would get cancelled out and you get C equals to SM divided by N, right? And okay, C is equal to what? SM divided by N and what is SM? It is capital S, right? What is that? It is capital S. Okay, so C equals to you can say S divided by N. This thing is clear, yes, no. Okay, all right. So then, see, this is total mass divided by number of moles. If you divide total mass by total number of moles, then what do you get? Mass of a substance divided by number of moles. Then what do you get? Tell me. What will you get? Oh, I wrote it in denominator. C is equal to S times M. Or should I write S is equal to C divided by M. Right. Mass of substance divided by number of moles is molar mass or you call it molecular weight right yes no everyone this is clear right so mass of substance divided by number of moles is equal to molar mass or you also call it as molecular weight right so that is capital m okay for carbon it is 12 grams and for other substances it would be given right i mean uh, you know it for most of the substances okay so cp is the molar heat capacity at constant pressure this is for gases and cv is the molar heat capacity at constant volume all right so now we know this very clearly that if two substances are in contact and their temperatures are different, then what will happen? The heat would be conducted from a body at higher temperature to a body at lower temperature. And the amount of heat that is given away by a hot body is equal to amount of heat absorbed by the cold body. Right? We know this. Okay. So there would be some problems based upon that. And then Next is latent heat. Now, what is latent heat? So, see this. Uh, I think you can see this clearly. Okay. So, see. Now, suppose you have some solid substance. Okay. You have some solid substance. And you heat it up. Okay. For example, you have ice. Okay. This is huge ice block. You heat it up. Then what happens? So, it will get converted to liquid at some time, but now its temperature, suppose you start from minus 4 or minus 5 degrees Celsius, okay, minus 5 degrees Celsius or in Kelvins you start, uh, let's say 0 degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvins, no? Suppose you start from something, uh, what? 250 Kelvins, something like that. So the ice is at very low temperature you heat it up so what will happen so its temperature will increase right and the amount of heat supplied uh, with respect to the temperature if you plot this graph temperature the increment in temperature and the heat supplied it would be a straight line 
okay until it reaches 0 degree celsius okay until it reaches 0 degree celsius what happens at 0 degree celsius is the temperature would remain 0 degree celsius only but it will keep on absorbing heat okay you are giving continuously you are giving heat but still its temperature remains 0 degree celsius for some time okay and once all of the solid gets converted to liquid that means all of the ice gets converted to water let's say then after that its temperature will rise again okay then again a point will come so for water it would be 100 degree celsius where its temperature will stay 100 degree celsius even if you are continuously providing heat so what will happen at 100 degree celsius so all of the water will get converted to vapor okay water vapor and till the time uh, it gets converted to water vapor its temperature will stay 100 degree celsius and then again you can increase the temperature by giving more heat so you can see these two phases where the temperature remains same right so where is the heat given amount of heat given go where does it go okay so simple answer to this is the substance needs some energy to get converted from one state to another state okay so if solid gets converted to liquid or liquid gets converted to gas so in order to this in order for this expansion it will need some heat uh, that means it needs some energy right so there you say that whenever there is phase change okay change of state there is no increment in temperature that means the energy is being utilized in changing the state of substance okay so the substance will take some energy when it gets converted from solid to liquid right and during that process its temperature will not increase because energy is being utilized in changing the state and also when it gets converted from liquid to uh, gas gaseous state in that case also it will keep on absorbing the energy that means heat right and its temperature will not change so energy is utilized in changing its state from liquid to gas okay so the amount of energy it requires per unit mass it is called as latent heat it is known as what latent heat so there are two latent heats one is latent heat of fusion okay so this is when the solid turns to liquid and then there is latent, latent heat of vaporization this is when the liquid gets converted to vapor uh, i mean gas okay so therefore the heat required during the change of state suppose it is q and mass is m so latent heat is defined as the amount of heat taken per unit mass to change the state of substance uh, or from one state to another state right solid to liquid or liquid to gas then you can take the mass on other side so amount of heat taken can be written as what mass multiplied by l where l is what the latent heat okay is this thing clear everyone all right good so then we'll solve some problems based upon this thing let's see this one from NEET 2020 the quantities of heat required to raise the temperature of two solid copper spheres of red r1 and r2 to 1 kelvin r in the ratio okay so tell me so we just wrote the delta q is equal to what s m delta t right so we can say delta q1 by delta q2 so delta q1 is the amount of heat required when its radius is r1 and delta q2 is amount of heat required okay when its radius is when its radius is r2 
so i will write delta q1 is equal to s times m1 m1 delta t and delta q2 is s times m2 multiplied by delta t right this is small s only okay and i will divide first equation by second equation right i have already written down the division sign okay so we'll divide that so we can get rid of s s and delta t delta t right and actually you can <laughs> use common sense that delta q is just directly proportional to mass right this is like natural okay delta q is directly proportional to mass and therefore you could just write that delta q1 by delta q2 is equal to m1 by m2 okay directly okay so delta q1 by delta q2 change in temperature is same okay change in temperature is 1 kelvin only right so you get m1 divided by m2 and that is equal to now mass is density times volume so density times volume 1 density times volume 2 okay so density density gets cancelled so what is volume of a sphere 4 by 3 pi r cube okay so then we have that's equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube 4 by 3 pi r1 cube divided by 4 by 3 pi r2 cube r2 cube okay so this 4 by 3 pi and 4 by 3 pi gets cancelled out and you have r1 by r2 cube and what's the relation between r1 and r2 so it is r1 is 1.5 that means 3 by 2 times r2 so r1 by r2 is 3 by 2 and you have 3 by 2 cube what would be the answer 3 cube is 27 2 cube is 8 so the answer is 27 divided by 8 <clears throat> right all right let's see next one the thermal capacity of 40 gram of aluminium okay the specific heat capacity is given and they are asking about just heat capacity or thermal capacity so s is equal to we know m times s okay so mass is 40 gram and this one is also given in grams so that gram and gram will get cancelled out right so let's just multiply it out so 40 multiplied by 0 0.2 calorie per gram per kelvin okay so what do we get we get 8 okay but this is uh, this would be calories per kelvin but the options are in joules per kelvin okay so we know this that one calorie is equal to 4.2 joules right it is 4.18 joules i guess let's take 4.2 only so if you multiply this thing by 4.2 so 8 times 4.2 then what do you get uh, the answer would be in joules per kelvin so 8 pose are 32 32 33.6 that is the answer right okay this one is very simple okay let's see next one two identical bodies are made of a material for which the heat capacity increases with temperature okay heat capacity is not constant heat capacity increases with temperature okay one of these is at 100 degrees celsius while the other one is at 0 degrees celsius if the two bodies are brought into contact then assuming no heat loss the final common temperature is right so two identical bodies let's take two spheres okay and their heat capacity they are made up of same material so first one is at 100 degrees celsius second one is at 50 degrees celsius 50 no no 0 degrees celsius not 0 degrees celsius and then they are brought into contact then what will happen okay tell me so let's say heat capacity of first one is s1 and heat capacity of second one is s2 s1 heat capacity of this one is s2 and it's given that 
heat capacity increases with temperature means S1 would be greater than S2, right? S1 is greater than S2. So, let us bring them in contact. So, what will happen? What would be the common temperature? Tell me, if heat capacity is equal, then what would be the common temperature? If heat capacity is equal, then it would be 50 degree Celsius, right? Okay, considering there is no loss of heat to the surrounding. Okay, but now heat capacity of this body is greater, heat capacity of this one is lesser. So, what will happen? See, heat capacity is greater means to change its temperature, you need large change in uh, heat, right? So, if it gives away some heat, suppose it gives away the heat delta Q, okay? Then, Suppose delta T1 is change in temperature of first body and delta T2 is change in temperature for the second body. Okay. So, first body is giving heat to the second body because it is at higher temperature, second one is at low temperature. Okay. So, heat given is equal to what delta Q. So, this one gives heat equal to delta Q, this one absorbs heat equal to delta Q. But if heat capacity is smaller, means its temperature will increase faster because heat required would be less, right? How can you write the change in temperature? So, delta T can be written as, okay, you have delta Q is equal to SM delta T, right? So, delta T can be written as, okay, delta Q divided by SM, okay, mass of two bodies is equal okay so delta t is inversely proportional to s that means if s is small the change in temperature would be large so so what will happen delta q is same change in uh, i mean this one is giving heat equal to delta q this one is absorbing heat equal to delta q so delta q is same for both of them but then the specific heat capacity is different therefore its temperature temperature of this body will rise faster okay but temperature of this body won't fall that faster because its specific heat capacity is higher so change in temperature is inversely proportional to specific heat capacity so temperature of this body will not change that fast the temperature of this body will change fast okay so then the temperature of this body becomes 50 degree celsius first okay I mean, this body gains temperature faster, uh, so its temperature increases and suppose it becomes 50 degree Celsius, so it changes by 50 degree Celsius, but temperature of this body won't change by 50 degree Celsius in same time. It will need some more time, right? So, but uh, it is still at higher temperature, that means it is still giving away some heat to this body. So, what will happen? So, this attains 50 degree Celsius and still its temperature keeps on rising okay so they will settle at a temperature which is somewhere between 50 and 100 degrees celsius i mean at least a little bit greater than 50 degrees celsius is this thing clear everyone yes no Right, so answer is more than 50 degree Celsius. Okay, any doubt? No doubt, right? Okay, let's see next one.
the liquid oxygen at 50 kelvin is heated to 300 kelvin at constant pressure of one atmosphere the rate of heating is constant which of the following graphs is repre represents the variation of temperature with time okay liquid oxygen liquid oxygen at 50 degrees celsius is heated to 300 at constant pressure and then the rate of heating is constant which graph represents the variation of temperature with time tell me it would be option a right okay yes no provided that it gets converted it gets converted to what gaseous form okay somewhere between 50 kelvin and 300 kelvin right and we know that it it will get converted to gaseous form because at room temperature which is about 300 kelvin so oxygen is in the gaseous form only okay oxygen is in air means it is in gaseous form right is this thing clear all right let's see next one so a piece of ice falls from a height h so that it melts completely only one quarter of heat produced is absorbed by ice and all energy of uh, ice gets converted into heat during its fall okay so ice falls and all of its energy gets converted to heat so out of that only one quarter is absorbed by ice okay and it's given that it melts completely so the value of h is what is the value of h this is the question okay tell me So the heat produced, I can say heat produced in the process would be equal to what? So it's given that all of its energy gets converted to heat. So heat produced would be equal to what? MGH because if you release anything from some height, how much energy does it have? MGH, right? Okay, so Q is equal to MGH. But then heat absorbed is equal to what? Heat absorbed is equal to Q by 4. This is given. And it melts means it gets converted from solid to liquid. So this heat absorbed is suppose Q dash. Okay, Q, da Q dash can be written as M times L. Q prime can be written as M times L, right? okay what is q prime it is q by 4 it is q by 4 and that's equal to m times l and then what is what is q q is equal to mgh okay so mgh is equal to mgh divided by 4 is equal to ml or you can just move that 4 on other side so 4 ml okay mm gets cancelled take g on other side so you get h is equal to 4 times l divided by g and then put the values okay so very very simple question so that is equal to 4 times what is latent heat 3.4 into 10 raised to 5 divided by g is 10 okay so this thing is 10 raised to 4 3.4 times 4 so that would be 16 12 13.6 13.6 times 10 raised to 4 okay or you can say 136 times 10 raised to 3 in meters that means 136 kilometers right that is the answer 136 kilometers option a 
right this one is clear all right very good okay simple question let's see next one then 0.3 kg of hot coffee which is at 70 degree celsius is poured into a cup of mass uh, 0.12 kg find the final equilibrium temperature so 0.3 kg of hot coffee which is at 70 degree celsius is poured into a mass of uh, a cup of mass of 0.12 kg okay what is the final temperature right so here this is very simple <clears throat> so heat lost by copy <clears throat> sorry i can say heat lost by copy is equal to heat gained by cup right so final temperature of cup would be more and suppose t is the final temperature final temperature so how can we write heat lost by copy <clears throat> so it is just tell me mass of copy multiplied by specific heat capacity okay specific heat capacity of copy multiplied by change in temperature so change in temperature would be its initial temperature which is 70 degree celsius minus final temperature which is t okay so this is equal to again mass of cup cu for cup not this is not copper okay so shall i write cup then specific heat capacity oh this thing specific heat capacity of cup right let's write cup cup okay multiplied by uh, the change in temperature so this thing would be t minus the initial temperature so its initial temperature is 20 so t minus 20 right so this is very very simple so put the values mass of cup uh, mass, mass of coffee is 0.3 kg so this is 0.3 multiplied by its specific heat capacity is specific heat capacity of coffee is 4080 Okay, four zero eight zero multiplied by you have seventy minus t, and that's equal to mass of cup is zero point one two. Its specific heat capacity is one zero two zero multiplied by you have t minus twenty. So this thing is, I guess, this is this gets nicely cancelled out because four zero eight zero divided by one zero two zero. This thing is four four times point three. No, no, it's one point two. One point two divided by this thing is ten. So you have ten times of seventy minus t is equal to t minus twenty, right? So check my calculation. You have seven hundred minus ten t is equal to t minus twenty. So move this twenty on this side, so it becomes seven twenty. And this ten t on that side is plus ten t. Eleven T is seven twenty. And therefore T would be seven twenty divided by eleven. So something greater than sixty. Sixty five. Check it. is it correct yes no right and this is clear very very simple question right okay this one is very simple all right let's see next one a lead bullet of unknown mass is fired with the speed of 180 meters per second into a tree which in which it stops okay lead bullet bullet is fired in a tree and it stops there okay then assuming that in this process two third of heat produced goes into the bullet two thirds of heat produced goes into the bullet and one third into wood 
टू थर्ड बुलेट एब्जॉर्ब वन थर्ड वुड एब्जॉर्ब ओके देन द टेम्परेचर ऑफ बुलेट राइजेस राइजेस बाय सो दिस इज द क्वेश्चन टेल मी सो हाउ मच ऑफ हीट वुड बी प्रोड्यूस्ड सो वी जस्ट सॉ अ क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस दैट आइस फॉल्स फ्रॉम सम हाइट ओके सो हाउ मच ऑफ हीट वुड बी प्रोड्यूस्ड इट्स इक्वल टू एम जी एच एंड इन दिस इन दिस केस there is a bullet moving with this much velocity so how much of heat would be produced heat produced would be equal to q would be equal to ke of bullet that is equal to half mv square right and then how much of heat does it absorb so absorbed by bullet because we want to find out the temperature of bullet rises by okay so let's write it delta q so heat absorbed by bullet heat absorbed by bullet okay let's say it is delta q prime so it's equal to 2/3 of delta q this is given right and then uh its specific heat capacity is also given okay so we can say delta q dash can be written as sm times delta t okay and that is 2/3 of delta q means it is 2/3 of a half of mv square so 2/3 of half of mv square is equal to sm delta t mm gets cancelled right mm gets cancelled and then what do we get so we want delta t move s on other side so delta t is therefore equal to this 2 2 is cancelled okay so what remains is v square divided by 3 times of 3 <coughs> times of s right oh that that much then we have done some mistake somewhere okay specific heat capacity oh <laughs> great here is the mistake right so specific heat capacity first of all specific heat capacity we need to convert in joules per kg right there is joules per gram okay so we need to be very careful so how much would it be so 1 gram can be written as 10 raised to what 10 raised to minus 3 kg that's in denominator so take it to the numerator so it becomes 10 raised to plus 3 right or simply you can say it requires 0.12 joules of heat to increase uh, the temperature of 1 gram by 1 degree celsius so to increase the temperature of 1 kg by 1 degree celsius how much of heat would uh, will it, will be required 1000 times of that okay so the specific heat capacity is equal to what 0.12 multiplied by 10 raised to 3 okay and then we put the values so then put the values so delta t is equal to 180 times 180 divided by 3 Times S is equal to 0.12 into 10 raised to 3 means if you multiply that out, uh, I guess you get 1.2. How much do you get? Sorry, what do you get? You get 120. You get 120. Okay, then 180 by 120 is 3 by 2. Okay, this is 3 is to 2, and then this 3 3 gets cancelled out. 180 by 2, it's 90. 90 degree celsius right yes everyone okay so we need to be very very careful here because the specific heat capacity it's given in what joules per gram degree celsius okay all right is this thing clear indusha nikita okay good all right let's see next one steam at 100 degree celsius is passed 
of steam at 100 degrees Celsius is passed into 20 gram of water at 10 degrees Celsius, right? So there is 20 gram of water at 10 degrees Celsius and you pass some steam. When the water acquires a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius, okay, it acquires a temp temperature of 80 degrees Celsius, the mass of water present will be, take the specific heat capacity of water this much and the latent heat of steam is this much. Okay, tell me. Okay, so let's try this. Steam at 100 degrees Celsius is passed into 20 gram of water. Okay. So, then what can we say that steam loses some heat. So, heat lost by steam. Is equal to heat gained. By water. Right. So then heat lost by steam. So when uh, the steam okay is passed over the water or through yeah over the water, then what will happen? Some of the steam will get converted to water too. Okay, some of the steam will get converted to water too. Okay, so its initial mass you can say initial mass of steam which gets converted to uh, water. Okay, times how can we write this? So, there are two kinds of heat lost, okay, one is, one is what the heat lost uh, when there is change in temperature only and the steam is getting converted to water also, what we can say, that heat lost due to what, change in state. Okay, heat loss due to change in change in state and heat loss due to change in temperature. Okay. So then yeah. So let's do this. So mass of okay, heat loss by steam. Oh There are too many shortcuts here. <laughs> All right. So, mass lost by steam would be one. In one case, it is lost for change in temperature. Okay. You can say it is equal to mass of steam times the specific heat capacity times change in temperature. Right. Plus, what will happen? the steam will get converted to water also so mass of steam that gets converted to water okay so multiplied by the latent heat capacity latent heat okay latent heat of steam so let's write it as ls heat gained by water can be just written as mass of water multiplied by specific heat capacity and multiplied by the change in temperature Okay, so let's say this is delta T1, this is delta T2. So, how can we write delta T1 and delta T2? Okay, so everything is uh, in same units. Specific heat capacity is 1 gram, okay, 1 calorie. S is equal to 1 calorie per gram per degree Celsius, right? So, what we can do is we can just substitute for the specific heat capacity. So, that becomes 1. This thing becomes 1 mass of steam we don't know but we can take it common s is equal to 1 okay then delta t1 how can we write delta t1 so it would be final temperature let's write it so this thing times 1 is s times final temperature is 80 degrees celsius okay minus initial temperature so heat lost would be initial minus final it is 100 degrees celsius minus 80 degrees celsius so 100 minus 80 right so that is delta t1 then you have mass of steam multiplied by its latent heat uh, so latent heat is how much 540 and that's equal to mass of water is given it's 20 grams so that is 20 gram multiplied by 1 multiplied by delta t2 so delta t2 is its initial was 10 and final is 80 so the rise in temperature is 80 minus 10 
okay degree celsius right so then this thing is equal to what this is equal to 20 this is 540 540 plus 20 is 560 so 560 times mass of steam is equal to uh, here you have 70 times 20 right and then you can move that 560 on other side so what do you get mass of steam is equal to 70 times 20 divided by 560 and that is equal to 70 times 2 is 140 140 divided by 560 no no 56 okay uh, this is 4 i guess so 10 by 4 okay 2.5 so mass of steam would be equal to 2.5 grams because everything is in grams okay and initially the mass of water was 20 grams now this mass of steam this much mass of steam also gets converted to water and therefore what will be the final mass so i can say final mass final mass of water would be equal to what it is mass of water okay mass of water multiplied by sorry i said multiplied <laughs> mass of water plus mass of steam right so that would be equal to what mass of water is 20 grams mass of steam is 2.5 grams so it would be equal to 22.5 grams so is this one clear everyone okay so now this kind of question takes a little bit of time little bit of means little bit more time compared to uh, some simpler questions okay uh, it doesn't mean this is not simple but this is little bit lengthy so here see the specific heat capacity of two things is same it is just water in some cases there would be some aluminium balls something like that okay aluminium object it is dipped in water so specific heat capacity of that one would be different okay specific heat uh, capacity of water would be different right okay let's see next one but if you solve that uh, you can solve it sure shot sure, right so 10 gram of ice cubes at 0 degree celsius are released in a tumbler of water okay at 40 degree celsius Assuming that negligible heat is taken from the surroundings, the temperature of water in the tumbler becomes nearly. So again, just like the previous case, in previous case, some steam gets converted to water. Here what happens is, uh, ice will also get converted to water. Okay. So, <coughs> I'm sorry. You can write it in similar way. Okay. So heat lost by water heat lost by water is equal to heat gained by ice okay but ice gains heat in two ways okay water loses heat in only one way in the sense that there is uh, there will be only change in temperature but for ice there will be change in temperature also right but first of all it will get converted to water right so we can say mass of ice times l the latent heat is the amount of heat required to change its state now it has got converted to water and now the temperature of that water okay which came from ice it increases okay so mass would be same as that of mass of ice multiplied by what specific heat capacity multiplied by change in temperature so let's call this delta t2 and heat lost by water would be mass of water times what the specific heat capacity times delta t1 okay the change in temperature and then we can just say that specific heat capacity of water here it's not even given so it's one per gram per degree celsius okay specific heat capacity of water is one calorie right per gram per degree celsius now you are not supposed to remember this but this is a very old question 
okay so maybe in those times you were supposed to remember all right so specific heat capacity of water is 1 calorie per gram per degree celsius and you can just substitute that here okay substitute that here so what do we get it is mass of water times delta t1 is equal to mass of ice you can take common so you have l plus delta t2 right because s is just equal to 1 okay so then then okay so we can find out mass of water from here the water equivalent is given water equivalent is 55 grams okay sorry we can find out final temperature from here so this is 55 grams and delta t1 would be equal to what so let us write here itself delta t1 is final temperature minus initial temperature okay t minus initial is so it is heat loss no so this will be initial minus final so 40 minus t t is suppose the final temperature and delta t2 delta t2 is suppose uh, what what was the initial temperature it's ice so 0 degree celsius okay so delta t2 delta t2 is t minus 0 okay so it is just t this is just t right so then let's put the values other values so mass of water is how much 55 times you have 40 minus t is equal to mass of ice is 10 times you have 80 plus t and just multiply it out so you have 55 times 40 minus 55 times t is equal to 800 okay plus 10 t okay so this thing goes on that side so it becomes uh, 65 t 65 t is equal to 55 times 40 65 t is equal to 55 times 40 okay so what is that 2000 2200 2200 minus 800 i guess okay so 1400 right yeah 2200 minus 800 so that is 1400 and then just divide that so dividing what do you get t is equal to 1400 divided by 65 something more than 20 because 65 20s would be 1300 that is 1400 it's 22 check that okay yes no 21.5 yeah so 22 is closest okay so this is the answer okay so yeah so this kind of question is it clear it takes some time right but you can solve it okay definitely